There's a program uh, that everyone should have if you're going to use a router on your plasma cam or your Samson table or even on your GoTorch. This is another free program that's really fantastic to uh, work with. Uh, it's made, as you can see with the name, it's made by a man named Jason Dory, D-O-R-I-E. You can search for his programs. He has several of them. This one is called Half Toner, H-A-L-F. T-O-N-E-R, Half Toner, version 1.4, and I haven't checked to see if there's a new version out, but this one works pretty well, and I'm going to demonstrate it to you now. I happen to have a thing for Sandra Bullock, so I'm just going to grab one of her photos as a demonstration uh, on how this program works, and I'm looking for a program, pro, looking for a photo with a fairly bland or even a white background. This one here might work. But let's see what else we can use. That one there. Um, let's see, let's find a nice photo of her. I actually did this, uh, did her uh, photo uh, several years ago with the Samson table. And uh, I can show you the results of that too, but uh, let's see, what, we, what can we do here? I don't like that one. Um, how about this? This is kind of a edgy photo right here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this photo and go look at it. And uh, it's <laughs> it's shaded. The photographer has shaded it so that uh, uh, so that it can't be copied very easily. So we'll try another one. Um, that's copy protection and whatnot that these people do online. And that's fine. Um, let's see, how about this one here? Let's see if I can get that. Well, that would be it, but we use cookies. Okay, that's fine. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to use a program that I have to grab this image. In fact, if I right click on it and just say save image as, that might be enough. I'll go to the desktop and Sandra Bullock one as a JPEG. And I will say, okay, save it. And that might, might be enough. I might not have to use my Snagit program to do this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that image and I'm going to drag it onto the desktop and there it is. Good enough. Um, now, the way this program works is it creates tool paths uh, or exports as a DXF and uh, it does what's called half toning. Well, half toning is the old way that newspapers used to print photographs. They either, use, they either had white paper or black ink and the way that they came up with the various shades of gray was to make the black dots larger or smaller and move them closer together or farther apart so there was more white paper in between the dots. And your brain would look at the photograph and it would say, well, that's a light gray or a dark gray, but actually it was just the same black dots that were spaced farther apart. So it was a mixture of the black and white and your brain read it as a shade of gray. Uh, this is a color photo, but that doesn't matter. We're gonna do the same thing. Uh, so the generator, what I'm going to say is I'm going to uh, uh, let's see, I'm going to use, I'll use lines. You can have dots, lines, or squares here. And um, I'm going to go with the lines. Uh, and the reason I'm going to go with the lines is because, uh, first of all, it cuts faster on a CNC table. And also, it, um, it's a little easier on your, on your plasma table. So now, I've got some settings here. And by the way, with halftone, the larger the image is, the, the more resolution you're going to get out of it. So this is 21 inches high and 32 inches wide. I'm going to go a width of 36. Well, let's see. I'm going to go 40 inches wide. There we go. I'll just say 40. And that sets the width at 24 inches. And you can see when you look at this image here, um, I have no borders. Well, I do have a small border on it. You can see it right up there at the top. There's a small border. 
Uh, I'll make the border a half inch wide, okay, so you can see it better. And then it asks for the minimum size of the, uh, of the cuts and the spacing in between the cuts and the maximum size of the cuts. Also, you can enter, you can play with these settings. You can also enter the angle of the cut. You can see this angle right now. Uh, the angle makes a difference because you kind of want to follow the face line. Let's see if I change this angle a little bit. Uh, to go, see I'm looking at her jawline right now. And, uh, uh, that might that might look okay um, I'm at 15 degrees let's see we'll go to 20 25 30 35 35 degrees uh, what I'm trying to do is follow the lines of her face a little bit so that there's not too much contrast in there and um, the dark boost is on if I turn the dark boost off what it does is it um, uh, it makes the dark too dark almost and uh, and you lose some of the detail you see this detail in the hair here when I turn the dark boost on and off so just to show you what happens here the spacing is 0.1750 I'm going to move the spacing up quite a bit and you'll see as I space the lines apart you'll see what's happening here and I'm going to uh, zoom in on this if I can if I remember how I think it's uh, I don't remember how to zoom in on this, but um, maybe it's not possible with this program. I haven't used it in a while, so I, I don't know. But you see, what's going to happen is your router is going to move along row by row, and it's going to start at this first row, and what it's going to do, well, it'll start up here in the corner first. But when you set the, uh, when you, when you set the, minimum and maximum size here uh, any any detail that was in the photo off to the side here that's below a certain minimum width of point two inches will f just fall off of the image and maximum size point two is also um, let's change those numbers a little bit now the spacing currently is point three six five I'm gonna make it point three seven five that's three eighths of an inch so each one of these lines is three eighths of an inch apart and what will happen is your router will uh, it's a V groove router that you use generally you use a 60 degree V groove router bit uh, to do this half toning but the router will come down and touch down the material here and it'll go down a certain depth if you can imagine the entire width of the router bit would be a large hole but this is just touching down with the tip here and as it comes to the end of this line up at the top here the router lifts up so of course when you take a V out of the surface the area that's, that it's touching the surface becomes narrower and what it would do is it would dig this and then dig this one at a time one of each of these lines and then when it gets in here to the face you see it would start up here and it would dig deep because it needs to go deeper for the hair to make it darker and then you can see her for her face it would come up and basically hover over the surface it is touching the surface a little bit and uh, I don't want it to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to increase the minimum size just a little bit but you don't want to increase it too much because you see if I say the minimum size now is fifty thousandths of an inch now we get these white spots in our faces you see and we lose too much detail now that might be what you're going for but I don't particularly like that so I generally lower the minimum size until those white spots disappear and then what I'll do is I will decrease the spacing uh, let's go for the maximum size I'm gonna go maximum size and we'll make these bigger and you'll see what I'm doing at the moment is I'm making the router cut deeper it's still spaced three eighths of an inch apart, uh, 0.375, but the router is cutting deeper. You see here, and then here at her eye, it comes up higher, and then it digs down here deep to go through her eye, to, and, and then comes back up to her face, her forehead again, and then it digs down deep to cut through her hair. 
And what that's doing is after you after you route your halftone image in your material, you would blow it all off with an air gun. Then you would spray paint it a color. Uh, flat black works best. You can spray paint it flat black and the whole surface of it and then let it dry. And then when it's completely dry, you come back with an orbital sander and you sand over the surface. And of course, these ridges, anywhere that the ridge is the original surface, you're going to sand the black paint off of it and it's going to leave these white lines in between. Anywhere that the router has cut down into the material and your paint has landed in those grooves, the paint is going to remain. Now, it depends on what kind of a look you like. I like more detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the maximum size. I'll reduce it down for the moment to 0.25. And then I'm going to reduce the spacing and bring those lines together more. And you'll see what happens to the image. It gives you a different look. Okay, I'm still going to go maximum size a little bit smaller. I'll go 0 0.2 one and bring this spacing together again and that's looking pretty good right there uh, I have a little bit of white spot on her cheek here so the minimum size I'm gonna go just a little bit smaller to get rid of that there it is uh, point point oh two which is twenty thousandths is the minimum size that it will cut and this image is 40 inches wide and 24 inches tall. And um, if you invert the image, uh, you get basically the same thing, except that now it's cutting the uh, it's cutting the grooves for the white, as you can see, instead of for the black. Okay. If you look up at the top and the bottom, it's actually cutting the grooves for the white. Now, if, you're, if your material is black, um, you know, like a, a black piece of center board or something, you can spray paint it white and then sand it and you'll bring back the tops of the black ridges and whatnot. And that can look good too, but I generally go with the, the inverted image. And what that does is that allows me to use a white material like white center board or white um, you can even use um, you can even use uh, white marker board and other things like that to get an image. And once that's done, you go to the tool path and you set your safe Z. Uh, I'm going to set my safe Z at um, half an inch. And let's see uh, the feed rate and the tool angle and whatnot. Is, it's okay to set that, but you're going to do that with the, with the design edge anyway. So, um, I generally don't do two pass cuts because you're not cutting very deep with your router when you're doing this. You can do it in one pass. And what I would say is I would write the G code. Okay. And then I would save the G code at the desktop. I'm going to just call this Sandra. Um... and I'll save it okay and then with the DFX DXF I can write to DXF also and I'll call this uh, Sandra DXF and go ahead and save that okay now what we've done here by creating this image I'm gonna bring design edge in here right here and I'm going to import uh, first I'll import uh, Sandra DXF I want you to see what that looks like and what that does I will import it as cut paths and that's because it's going to be almost impossible to convert these to cut paths uh, once once you bring them in uh, if you bring them in as closed paths and let's see um, We'll keep the 3D properties. Uh, you you really are going to need the the full 3D upgrade to carve this um, correctly. And I'll open this. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to show you 
this image and we'll look a little closer at it and you'll see that it has created a lot of closed paths for the uh, for the plasma cam to to carve and cut now the problem with this is this is a path so your router bit is going to follow this path around like this instead of cutting down in the center starting here and then going down the center and digging deeper here and even deeper here as your router bit um, passes over the material you can see what's happening here I'm showing you some examples okay so here it would it would be at this height then it would dig down a little deeper to get to here dig down a little deeper to go to here and as it goes back and forth across these it would dig up and down but it's not going to do that as a DXF file as a DXF file it's going to follow these cut paths and that's not what you want open I'll say new so instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the G code uh, the G code of Sandra where is she there she is and let's see I will keep the 3d properties and open it and now what we have it looks like a flat image but if you view it in 3d you can see that her face is there and the machine is going to raise and lower over those paths and give you the 3D cut image that you're looking for, okay? So that's how, um, that's how Half Toner works. Uh, I will say new on this again. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, let's import that again as G code and I'll import it as cut paths and we'll go to Sandra because I want you to see it in operation here Sandra open okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut preview and pass extend beyond Z area that's okay so I'll say yes and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the machine and you'll see that it will uh, one at a time it will cut across these and and it looks like it's just doing a straight cut but the router is actually moving up and down as it moves over the contours of her face so that's um, that's what the uh, half toner image would do when you're cutting lines is it just cuts one line at a time and it plows them down until uh, until you get the image that you want now let's go back to this image I'm going to go to the generator instead I'm going to go to dots okay and now with the dots you have the same width and the same height of the image and the same border you have the spacing of the dots and the minimum and maximum size of the dots and then you can uh, offset the odd lines or not if you don't offset them you see they're they're set like a grid uh, I'll make the angle zero to make that easier to see See, now they're just square. But if I offset the dots, then it, it, it's, uh, you know, every other dot is offset from the other one. So, okay. So then we look at her face, and each one of these dots is, um, uh, again, the, the round router bit either barely touching the material, or it is touching the material and let's see I'm, what I'm going to do is uh, what do I want to do here yeah I want I want the dark yeah I want it inverted because I'm going to fill this in with black paint and everywhere that it touches down you can see at the top left of her head up here it's going to drill that hole and that hole and that hole and that hole now I will tell you that this image 40 inches wide and 24 inches tall is going to take about eight hours for this machine to do because you got to remember your router is going to go down and drill this hole come up go down drill this hole come up go down drill this hole come up so when you have thousands and thousands of dots here um, it's going to take some time uh, let's see there's 26,313 dots that it has to drill and you can do the math if it takes two seconds per dot that's 52,000 seconds uh, divided by 60 seconds per minute so it's going to take uh, uh, what nine hours 
it would take nine hours to cut this. The uh, spacing, again, can be made closer together uh, or farther apart. Okay. And the size of the dots can be made larger or smaller. And each one of these things will give you a different look. Now, you'll see here off to the side the, the these little dots the the router is just going to touch down on each one of these little dots and it's going to it's going to make a, a a mark here so this is a lot of dots here that you really don't need and that's why you would um, uh, increase the minimum size to get rid of those and say every anything under a certain size i just don't even want you to cut it so you could go with this kind of a look, and by the way, this, this maximum size, there really is no maximum size. You could use a half inch bit and increase your spacing and get a completely different look out of this. Now this will obviously take less time because this is only 6,000 dimples instead of 23,000. And, uh, and each time the router touches down, it will dig this hole to the depth that the V-bit needs to dig in order to make that circumference in the material. You can see that in her hair, the holes are much bigger and it's removing much more of the top white surface of the material, which is why the hair looks darker. And on her face, the holes are smaller and revealing more white and that allows us to, to see the difference here. But when you get too big, it kind of gets, it does speed things up, but it kind of loses the, the, um, uh, the fine aspects of it. So uh, my maximum size generally uh, will be about 0.22 and my minimum size will be about um, uh, maybe 0.15 or 0.12 and then I'm going to reduce the spacing on these and you'll see what happens here. Now I've got these white, white thing on her face so again, I'm going to reduce the minimum size until that disappears. And there it is. And you can see this will come out to be a beautiful image uh, if it's routed out. Uh, the area out here will not be routed because the dots out here are smaller than the minimum size. So the router will start up here at the corner of her hair and it will go back and forth and back and forth and it will cut out the 21,753 dots that make up this image. And this would be a beautiful uh, photo. Once you sprayed it in with black and then let it dry and sand the top surface of the material off, you would get a beautiful art image. I'm going to show you some of the things I've done right now. My first experiment with 3D carving was just in a piece of uh, um, particle board, basically MDF. And I, I did this uh, portrait of Charlie Chaplin. And um, I just wanted to test the, the 3D carving. And as you can see, the router bit went up and down as it passed over the material, and it gave me this 3D image. So then I started experimenting a little bit. Uh, this is a halftone image done uh, with Jason Dory's uh, software. And as you can see, the router just started at the bottom here, and it just went back and forth like this in one single path. And then it plunged here and it started to go down. And as you, as you can see where it needed to be black, it plunged deeper. Okay, you see that? And where it needed to be white, it came up and just either skimmed across the surface or it didn't touch the surface at all. That's what it's gonna look like when you do half tone carving. See, each row, the router plunges down where the, where the path needs to be wider and comes up where it needs to be thinner. Okay? So I, I took that image and uh, the first one, I that one there, I spray painted with some red primer and sanded it just to see what it would look like. But then I found a board from a 1970s stereo cabinet. And it was kind of a neat board. It's 40 years old and weathered from being in the garage and, and, and whatnot. And Charlie Chaplin was, you know, the old black and white film comedy artist anyway. So I went ahead and I routed, um, I routed the MDF uh, just just <laughs> straight out of the garage. I laid it down and I started routing back and forth because I wanted to get that old scratchy look. 
and I was really surprised at how well this came out. I actually used this as an avatar on, on some of my message boards and things. But you can see how the router digs down where it needs to expose the white surface. This board was sprayed black on the surface, so I was digging down to expose the light colored particle board underneath the black surface. And that's what it was happening here. And the finished piece, I think came out very nice. Uh, considering that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted that look and uh, I'm very very happy with it. So that's one of my favorite pieces experimenting with half toning and it was done on an old piece of wood that should have been thrown away 40 years ago but it wasn't and so that's how that came out. Uh, with other half toning here's Sandra Bullock again uh, the spacing I was carving too wide and even though it cut very fast through here because there weren't that many lines I didn't get the detail that I wanted uh, because um, it, it's got to do with resolution, resolution of an image. This one here is only about uh, 12 inches wide and 14 inches tall so then I, I, I tried even bigger dots just to see what it would look like and you can see what happens when you make the dots too big uh, you just lose the resolution. Now if this board was six feet wide that would have been a beautiful image but because that was only eight inches wide and ten inches tall it wasn't enough for the uh, board. But you can see here is a good example of how it digs deep in some places and shallow in other places and that's called half toning and that's exactly how it achieves the images. Okay so then I did Sandra with uh, some other materials and whatnot and this is my favorite right here. This is uh, 19,640 individual holes drilled into a piece of um, white marker board. And this is before I realized that I should have reduced the size of the dots and it wouldn't have drilled all these holes around her. All of these holes didn't need to be drilled, but it went ahead and drilled them. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on it so you can see it a little bit. It's not a very clear photo, but um, that was done uh, just this way on the machine. Let's get closer here. Now you can see how, how you see where her hair is dark, the bit dug deeper and it removed more of the white surface and therefore when your eye looks at it, it says, oh that area is dark brown. It's actually the same color as every other brown dot, it's just that you see more of the brown dot. So it looks darker to you than the smaller dots that have uh, more white around them. It's, uh, it's kind of an optical illusion, but what it produces is, uh, here, here's a panel. Uh, what it produces is, is a, a nice, uh, basically low resolution artsy kind of a, a panel. This one's four foot wide and about three and a half foot tall. It was done very quickly with large dots. These are a bunch of friends of mine out in California. And uh, I, probably should have made smaller dots and put them closer together because as you can see I lost a lot of the detail uh, the, in the photo because there's too much white there so anyway that was worth an experiment and let's see uh, this is the first half toning I did it was it was lines it was a train and it, it was lines done um, with the router the DeWalt 611 router and John Derby's router adapter and it came out kind of nice but that was just an experiment. I, I just wanted to see how it would work. Um, after I painted it and sanded it, it came out pretty nice. This is an image of Cameron Diaz that I did. Now this is again Jason Dory's program half toning and I'm going to zoom in. You can see all it is is just the router scratching back and forth. See her eye here? Uh, where, the, where my mouse is uh, uh, or the magnifying glass if you can see that. It just dug a little deeper in this section of her eye which made it darker and then it came up over the top and just kind of skimmed the surface here and then it got a little deeper over here etc and each one of these lines was done individually by the plasma cam and it came out to be this awesome looking portrait I tried some 3D carving with Sandra Bullock and then I did Donna Douglas. Donna Douglas is Ellie Mae Clampett uh, from the Beverly Hillbillies. I took a photo of hers right off of Google 
and threw it into um, uh, threw it into. Um, Actually, I think I think this went directly into Design Edge, and it was converted using their software. I don't think I did uh, uh, Dory's software on this one, but it carved okay. Um, the thing is, with uh, with with Plasma Cam, it uses gradients, so things that are are white are the either white or black are the surface, and then the things that are either black or white are the bottom. And her teeth here are carved in because they were brighter than her skin and, and her, her eyebrows being darker were at the top and then her skin was a little uh, lighter and then her teeth were very white. And so it kind of did this surreal looking little carving image here, but uh, it still came out okay. I did do a big board of Clint Eastwood uh, just to see what that would look like. And again, I made the dots a little bit too far apart here. And um, um, right here, there was, there was some electrical interference or something and the computer lost track of the Z, so it dug a little deeper than it, than it should have. But uh, that's Cameron Diaz on the right, Sandra Bullock on the left, and good old Clint Eastwood in the middle. I did another Clint Eastwood. This is larger dots, and I got rid of the offset squares and, 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 and the angles and all that other stuff. And I wanted to see what it would look like. Well, this took less time because there were less dots, but because of the size of the dots and whatnot, it really didn't come out that well. I suppose if you looked at it from half a block away, it would look decent, but up close it didn't come out well at all, and I kind of figured that was a waste of time. And here's the difference. The big dot uh, image is on the left, and the fine dot image is on the right. And so you can see that if I, if I put the fine dot image dots closer together, that would have been an awesome photograph of Clint Eastwood cut with the plasma cam, actually with the Samson 510 table. And that took about 11 hours to cut this one, and this one took about 6 hours to cut on the left here because it's less dots. But um, uh, this is when I first started experimenting with this half-toning stuff, and so I was just playing around with different ideas. Again, with uh, Jason Dory's program, I took an image of a girl uh, off the internet and I set up the paths to do uh, half toning but instead of using a router I used a black paint pen and I thought it was awesome the plasma cam just went row by row and touched down the black paint pen and it painted this image back and forth and you can see right here up by the hair each time the pen touched down and started a new row and uh, that was kind of a fun experiment I enjoyed that so I got a little braver and I put a gold paint pen in the, in the uh, table in the machine and my own custom made little holder. You can make one too, it's not hard to make. But the paint pen started from side to side and it just touched down and then it would raise up and touch down again, raise up and touch down, etc. As it went back and forth across this image and it painted this uh, cougar uh, or wildcat logo. I think this is Western Kentucky University or maybe the Western Kentucky High School. I forget where I got it. But uh, it's done with a gold paint pen, and that came out pretty good. Here's a picture of the um, holder that I made. Uh, it's just an L bracket bolted to the side of the backing plate. With uh, It bent at 90 degrees with a hole in the end, and then I, I um, stuck a, a socket, a 15 millimeter socket, through the hole, and we used a rubber grommet on each side of this metal plate to hold it in place. I dropped a paint pen into it and I put another socket on top of it for some weight uh, to make the pen push down a little bit harder as it was painting and the machine went back and forth and painted this whole wildcat. I played around with a, a plate of aluminum that I had. I spray painted it. Believe it or not, that beautiful finish is just Rust-Oleum black gloss enamel. But I, I must have sprayed it right because it laid down and looked just like marble. And then I used my router bit, the V-Groove router bit. And I just touched down the surface and I, I used the uh, fonts, uh, fonts in Design Edge and I had it carve, carve out the fonts and it came out looking pretty awesome considering that was just a, <laughs> it was just a test. Uh, it kind of looks like a marble tombstone or something but um, that was done with the, with the plasma cam, was no problem. 
Uh, this is a piece of maple board and I, I laid out the paths and whatnot and I routed down into it to create this Colts sign. After it was routed down, I went ahead and I sprayed the uh, entire surface with black spray paint and I let that dry. And when you sand the paint off of the surface, of course you leave the paint in the pockets that you routed and you come out with a really sharp looking sign. This was an early experiment of John Wayne done in half tone. Um, I was just, just playing around with the machine, learning it, learning how to use it. It came out pretty nice though. I had a lot of people offer to buy it, but I didn't, didn't sell it. And this is another maple board. This is just an image of a child I found on Google. And as you can see in the half tone, it's just cutting row by row and digging deeper where it needs to be darker and coming up to the surface where it needs to be lighter. And it makes for a nice artsy uh, image rather than a photograph or, or something. It really, it really creates something nice to, uh, to, to make. And um, it's pretty simple to do. And the results were, uh, were pretty fantastic, I thought. <laughs> I could sell that, you know, this board cost me uh, $4, I think it was, and I don't know how long it took to cut this. It might have taken two hours for, to route that, but um, I, I could sell this for 150 bucks, no problem, if I knew who the parent was. <laughs> Here's a lighter image of the same board, as you can see. Uh, it'll give you a better idea of how the router does the half toning. And I could have made those lines closer together to get more detail. I could have cut a little less deep into the wood to get more detail. There were a lot of adjustments I could have done to really make this image pop. But this was just, uh, again, this was part of the learning experience. It was part of experimentation. Of course, screwing uh, vinyl records down with a screw in the center and then uh, laying out uh, a pattern, you can use a 16th inch or 32nd inch router bit and route into vinyl records. Now this crazy thing I made just for fun and I went to a show in Franklin and I put several of them out and I was embarrassed to put them out because they were just so darn simple to make. I was, I was you know, I was really embarrassed and people were, were throwing uh, $20 bills at me to buy these things. <laughs> So the records cost me 25 cents in a thrift store. It cost about, it took about, uh, uh, oh, I don't know, five or six minutes to route out the letters. And then, uh, you know, then you have this album, uh, you know, that you can sell. And I did, um, I did clock faces and I did other things like that as well. Uh, just experimenting with different things that I could do with records. So you can see the plasma cam does more than just plasma cutting. It does routing, it does, um, it, it's really a great machine and great software. Um, when you have the advanced design, the advanced machine control, the advanced height control, and uh, the full 3D uh, upgrade for doing your routing and automatic nesting and, you know, maybe customizable size, maybe, um, that will come in handy later on, but, um, there's a lot you can do with this machine. This is a photo of my grandparents. This photo is over 100 years old. Uh, it was a, a little photo about three by four inches and I scanned it in the computer and I tried to enhance it as best I could. This board is four feet tall and about uh, two and a half feet wide or so. And it is done in half tone. As you can see, it's done the same way. It's just the router digging in and coming up to the surface where it doesn't need to cut and digging in where it does need to cut, like his eye here. And when you stand back from a halftone image, and remember what I said, the larger the halftone image is, the more detail you can get into it. Um, I could have made this a lot darker if I had put those lines closer together, but this was a one-shot deal and I just this was part of my learning process. There's the original photo. Uh, there's a great lady, Laura Taylor, right here. She was a foster mother, never had any children of her own, but she raised 17 foster children uh, during her lifetime, and my mom was one of them. 
So I call her Grandma Taylor. And this is my mom. This is a four foot image, about three foot wide. It's a half tone of my mom. Done the same way, dug into the material, uh, spray painted black, and then the top surface sanded. After, after it dries, you gotta wait for it to completely dry. And it gives you this kind of an image. And when it's hanging on a wall, it looks fantastic. This is looking at it a little farther back. As you can see, that looks like a photograph. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't look at that and think, oh, that was done on a plasma cam, but yes, it was. Yes, it absolutely was. <laughs> I made a frame for uh, Sandra Bullock's portrait because I like it so much. And she's the girl that makes my heart go pitter patter. Unfortunately, I'll never meet her. She'll never know who I am, but uh, uh, she sure is pretty. Anyway, I went ahead and framed this, and uh, it's, it's uh, currently hanging in my wood shop. And uh, I'm kind of proud of it because that was my first um, real attempt at a, at a portrait with, uh, with half toning and using the Samson 510 table. But it, this can also be done on the plasma cam. Cameron Diaz also got a simple frame, uh, you know, around her. And uh, when I had my metal shop in town, I had these portraits hanging up on the walls. They weren't for sale, but they were just samples of what could be done with the, uh, with the plasma cam table. And of course, I framed my mother's uh, image and it hangs proudly up in my metal shop. Um, again, you look at this and you go, really? That was done with a Samson 510 table and a router? Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, the frame is... is um, custom because it because the I didn't bother to use a standard size for the board so I had to use some wall trim wall border trim and miter cut it and secure it on the back with some wood and whatnot to make the frame but um, yeah that is done with the Samson 510 table This is white PVC board uh, with a router. Uh, it's, it's monogramming, it's set up in Design Edge and cut with a router with a uh, uh, DeWalt 611 router. And uh, John Derby's router adapter, it works out really well. The Plasma Cam router will cut this also. Um, this type of material, it'll cut this pretty well. Um, so, you know, you can, do, you can do a lot with this table. This is a, a um, monogram that was cut out of birch plywood and uh it was go went to my neighbor uh jeff and shelly and uh she took it and painted it and i guess it's hanging on her back porch or something i don't know what she's done with it but uh that's it this was a uh a record that i cut with a 16th inch bit i wanted to see how accurate i could get i now have 32nd inch bits but this was a 16th inch bit and as you can see, it uh, uh, you lay it out in Design Edge, lay it out in Design Edge, and just cut it, and it uh, it does a pretty good job. You may have seen my other videos on YouTube. Uh, this is sign foam. This is a 15-pound sign foam. I made a sign for Brad Gregory Motors. And this is a two and a half, two and a quarter horsepower Bosch router mounted to the plasma cam or to the Samson 510 table, and it's routing out this sign. And uh, there it is, four by eight feet, and it came out absolutely beautiful. It was then painted and then hand painted, and uh, it's still standing out on the street here today. This is the cut path for that sign. Uh, this was done in um, V-Carve, I believe. Yeah, Vectric V-Carve, I think is what I used to create this. Uh, and it, it uh, did all of this cut path automatically. It was really something. And the machine just went around. I just laid the phone down and watched it do its thing, blew it off once in a while with an air hose, and there it was. It cut the whole thing out all at once. Isn't that awesome? That is totally awesome. There's the sign uh, sprayed with white 
exterior sign paint and then hand painted the black and the and the blue were hand painted with a little uh, quarter inch wide brush took some time to do it but we got the whole thing done on both sides there were two of these signs and then we put them up on the street and uh, it was the best looking sign on Main Street there for a while in town there it is on my truck getting ready to be delivered and there it is mounted to the pole at the lot on the corner uh, that sign is still out there today uh, Brad Gregory Motors has either closed or moved on and they haven't taken the sign down but uh, I suppose at some point this one will either move to another location or it will disappear or something I don't know nothing ever lasts forever but it's neat to think that that was done with a Samson 510 table and a router which is basically a CNC plasma table <laughs> But uh, I did routing for two or three years before I ever hooked up a plasma table to my Samson for the first time. I was, I was having too much fun with the router. This is a two-sided stainless steel sign I did for Center Street Bar and Grill in Madisonville, Kentucky. Uh, it was cut out with stainless steel uh, with the plasma uh, table. And then there's orange plex behind it and it was illuminated from behind. That's uh, both signs laid out. Uh, the adhesive to glue the uh, orange plex to the back of the stainless is drying right now. And uh, they're just laid on the table to dry. That's one nice thing about having the 510 table. It gives you a lot of workspace to, uh, to do projects like this. There's the sign mounted to the wall. I did not build the can. The can on the wall was uh, from an old business that was there, but I took the measurements and I just made the sign faces to fit inside the can. And it was a bit of a bear to get them in there because they were so darn heavy. But uh, we got it done. And what's really cool is there are no street lights on that street. So at nighttime, when you turn the corner, this is all you see. Isn't that an awesome sign? That's done on the Samson 510 table with a plasma cutter. Randy Yokely runs a welding shop here in town and uh, he also races cars. This is one of his race cars. And he gave me this photo and he wanted me to make a metal plaque for the car. So I traced it using Design Edge and I made him this. And it's about three foot wide and it hangs up in his shop. And um, it's uh, made out of stainless steel. This is another sign I did out of sign foam. It's a guard space storage. Uh, this time, instead of having the letters protrude, we just I just routed them as pockets, and then we painted them in again by hand. And this was a sign over the door of a st uh, office to a storage place here in Franklin. And they've changed their name now, so I don't know what happened to this sign. Randy Yokely had a project he needed done. Uh, he need, needed several of these cantilever arms made for some giant windows on the top of a barn. And so he gave me this, this uh, half inch plate. I guess it's half inch thick. And boy, these things were heavy. These were full plates when, uh, when he gave them to me. Fortunately, I have a forklift. And uh, I set them on here and I cut them with the machine and uh, then I took them over to him and he set them up and welded flat bar on them and fit it you know to the uh, to the cantilever arms and uh, the project came out nice and he told me it was quite a time saver because for him to cut all of these by hand would have taken them forever and I whipped them all out on my plasma table in about two hours eight of them
There's the arms after they were cut with the uh, hypertherm. Um, uh, I think I used the hypertherm 85 to cut these out. I don't remember. More experimentation. This is a trunk lid off of an old Chevy Camaro. And uh, what I did was I laid it on my plasma table. And uh, I have the uh, linear actuators on my 4x4 table. So we laid it out on that table and it gave us the height that we needed to cut this sign out of the top lid of the trunk without affecting the back, the bottom lid. And I thought, just thought that was awesome. We just, uh, we were going to wire brush it and let it rust, but then I thought, what the heck, it's already rusty. <laughs> so. And for anyone who thinks you can't do fine cutting with the Hypertherm 85, there's what, uh, there's what I was able to cut with the Hypertherm 85 with the fine cut tip. An old plow disc can be a great uh, wall decoration for a barn or an office or something. This is God Bless Kentucky, of course, because that's where I live. Uh, that was a very heavy disc. Uh, it's about, oh, 22 inches in diameter and, uh, uh, well, 20, 28 inches in diameter because those, those ribs are 9 inches apart, so I'm going to say it's 28. But anyway, the uh, plasma cam had no trouble following the uh, contour of that disc to uh, cut it out with the, uh, with the height control, advanced height control. This is the, uh, the venue in Bowling Green. Uh, it's a place for weddings and all kinds of things like that. It's an old textile mill or something and he, uh, he bought it and he uses it as a venue and rents it out for parties and things. He wanted a sign that looked weathered, so I took this stainless steel sign and I cut it with the plasma cam and then I beat it with chains and hit it with a grinder and hit it with a orbital sander and whatnot and then I clear coated it. And it came out looking like this. Now it's a one-way street, so it doesn't have to be red from coming the other direction. That's why, I w that's why we went with the cut through design. And he mentioned he might want to put something behind it and light it, but he never did that. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. There it is in the daytime. That sign came out all right. That's a very heavy sign, by the way. That's um, 12 gauge stainless steel. Another thing that I like to do, again, I, I, I really enjoy working with the router more with the plasma cam tables and software than I do with the plasma cutter. <laughs> Oddly enough, they made a plasma table, but it's a lot more fun to use as a router table. This is Corian. This is the, uh, so they call it solid surface material. Uh, Corian is the trade name. This is a, a, a knockoff product called Durasane uh, by another company. Uh, it's for the same purpose. You, you line your shower walls with it or you do a kitchen or a bathroom countertop and that type of stuff. Well, guess what? Corian routes really, really nice. So I took my 16th inch router bit and a little plaque, and this plaque is only about, um, oh, nine or 10 inches wide and maybe six inches tall. And it's done with a 16th inch router bit and look at the detail of how that router, how that routed out. Look at the middle of that E with people. That's a 16th inch bit that cut that letter E. So this solid surface material, you know, you think it's marble, but it's not. It's actually a resin with uh, colors and pigments and things in it to give it the various designs. But it's, uh, it's kind of like cutting a frozen stick of butter. It cuts really, really well. And um, I have a lot of fun routing um, Duracane. A lady came into my store with this round piece of wood that her husband had made sometime in his wood shop. And there was a, a wedding coming up and she said, what can you do with it? So I cut this piece of metal and we screwed it down with a few screws and uh, spray painted it white and laid it on top of this uh, wood. And that's how that came out. That's about uh, two feet in diameter. And again, looking for deals, I went to the, uh, you, know, you know, these uh, 
flea markets and whatnot, and there's a guy that sells the cabinet cutouts. When they when they make cabinets, they take the piece of wood that they cut the hole out for the cabinet door, and they sell it really cheap. So this was nice, nice wood, and this plank was about a dollar and twenty-five cents. And so I laid it down with the plasma cam, and I routed. Um, I tried to make some artificial tombstones, and so I routed into the wood and made these planks, and they came out pretty awesome. Here's another one that I made. Um, uh, unfortunately, stupid me, as the as the uh, table was returning to home, I killed the power, and the the router was still spinning, so it dropped down and it scratched the face of the thing, and then when I painted it, the scratch came out. I could have sanded it out, but it wasn't really important. Um, but that's all done with the plasma cam, including everything behind it as well. Again, these were plaques made out of the Corian material. They were made for a bunch of priests as a Christmas present. And uh, I really enjoy routing the Corian. It's, uh, it's fun to do and it comes out a really nice looking plaque. And um, these things are just made... Uh, look at that. <laughs> That's uh, I just set the router to run and walked away and came back an hour later and then I, I, uh, I ran the router twice through the letters to clean out all the chips and everything out of the letters. So I ran the whole pattern twice and then I uh, painted it over black and, and then I sanded the face of it and that's how it came out. And it's just nice and sharp and it looks awesome, totally awesome. That's done with, with solid surface material. You do with the uh, Samson table. This is, this is the store I bought and built and remodeled and I put a ton of money into it and whatnot, but uh, I ended up selling it a year later. So. There's a, I won't even go through those photos, but um, what I wanted to show you is if you use your imagination, there's a lot that you can do. You can see the inside of this store. This is that brick paneling, and it's all drilled uh, to, to, uh, to give, the, give the, a back alley look or a brick look. Rather than white pegboard, I figured that was a little bit classier. And uh, it really came out nice. Uh, in the store, you know, it was a nice way to display the, the, the metal and the merchandise. So use your imagination. Don't let uh, Don't let the stores decide what you're gonna do. Just just use your imagination and uh, uh, You know do things your way and you'll enjoy it a lot more Remember that I do offer online training uh, if your computer has internet access uh, you can contact me at this email address, and I'll tell you how we can link our computers together. Uh, I don't charge for that right now. I kind of do it for fun. So it's a good time to take advantage of uh, um, my ability to help you online with problems that you might have. Also, you can send your name, address, phone number, email, and details about your machine and your software uh, to me at adminow at mail.com and uh, I do one-on-one -on -one training either at your home or your office location. Uh, we set up appointments to do that and um, I will be happy to come out and visit with you maybe this spring or summer or even in the fall and uh, do a few days of training with you to help you uh, learn how to run Design Edge better and get more out of your, out of your software. So um, I'd like to hear from you. Let me know if you like this video. I'm sorry it's so long, but uh, I started going through some photos and well, there it is. So I hope you like this video.